This is a video about basic text editing in PowerPoint 2013. We have our sample presentation up on the screen. It's comprised of three content slides so far, and I've added a blank slide that I can use as sort of a scratch pad area to demonstrate some of the effects I'd like to talk about today. To begin with, though, uh, I'm going to click on this Kofi Annan slide and select some of the text. There's a text box I have on here. And as soon as you select text on any slide, the font group on the Home tab lights up. And the font group contains all of the basic text editing effects um, and changes that you can make. Notice also that the Drawing Tools tab lit up. I'm going to click on that for a second. Um, and you'll see that the uh, text editing effects on the Drawing tab are sort of sophisticated. There's a word art style drop down and there's lots of special text fills, text outlines, text effects, and so on. We're not going to talk about those more sophisticated text editing options today. I'm going back to the Home tab and just restrict my video today to basic text edits. Okay, with my um, text selected, uh, let's start up at the very top. I can change the font. Uh, Century Gothic is the heading and body text uh, from the font theme that goes along with uh, the design theme I've chosen for this presentation called ION. Every design theme has two font themes that go with it, a, a font chosen for the headings and for the body. In this case, they're the same. Now, if you decide to change fonts, it's really not a good idea in most cases to change the font on individual slides, but go to the slide master uh, to change them or create a custom uh, layout master and change a font on that instead of uh, on individual slides. Nevertheless, uh, if you do decide to uh, change the font, uh, clicking the drop down underneath uh, the fonts will display all of the fonts installed on your system. Uh, this is true type fonts and others too. Uh, it's better to stick with true type uh, because you can embed those in a PowerPoint presentation. I've also made another video on that topic. Next to the font group is the font size. And I've already changed the text in this text box to be 54 point, nice large size that can be seen from the back of the room. I'm going to be presenting in. The drop down next to font size will allow you to change it. Uh, that's 8 point. Uh, you might agree that's a little hard to see. And this drop down goes up to 96 point, uh, too large to fit on the slide. But uh, what I can do is if I need a really unusual font size, a really large one usually when I'm animating a single word and having each letter of the word fly on the screen one at a time, I can type a very large font size here. Let's say 200 point. And as soon as I press enter or click outside that box, my text becomes 200 point. Okay. Now I'm going to undo that change. Uh, so I just wanted to illustrate that you can type any value in that box that you want. Uh, okay, um, now these next two controls are the font up and font down uh, size controls. So I can increase my font size um, and it jumps by pre-programmed intervals here or decrease my font size with these controls. The next control is for clearing formatting and this can be very useful. Sometimes you'll be experimenting with um, text formatting and get things all hashed up and to get back to square one you just clear the formatting. Now I ha have in fact formatted the text in this uh, text box. I've made it 54 point instead of the default font size for my theme. So I'm going to clear that formatting and it jumps back to 18 point the default font size for text boxes. Okay, I'm going to undo that, go back to 54 point, and uh, clear formatting can also be very useful when you paste in content from other text sources, especially web pages. All right, the uh, set of controls below are the standard uh, text effect uh, that we're used to seeing uh, from Word. To boldface text, we just click the B, and you'll notice it has a colored background that stays lit when our bold text is selected. Uh, oftentimes, bold text is more difficult to read because the letters uh, get closer together uh, from the back of the room. So I tend not to use bold very much. Italicized, it's your choice. It's a matter of style, upright or slightly tilted. And underlined sometimes comes in handy, rarely for blocks of text. 
And here's the next one is an, an effect I like quite a bit. It's shadow. And notice how that uh, text stands out on the slide now when I've applied shadowing. Okay, there it is off. There it is on. In fact, uh, if I wanted to apply shadowing to my entire presentation, I would go to the slide master and apply it to the heading and body style and then come back and apply it to every text box and then uh, make that the default text box style. I've had uh, I've made other videos on this topic. Okay now the next control let me go to a slide and type some text here. I'm going to type the word education in a text box. Okay uh, the next one is the character spacing control. Most of the time you don't have to do anything with character spacing. Once in a while you'll want to increase your character spacing, especially when you're animating each letter at a time and have them fly on the screen individually. We'll get to that topic. But you can see it ranges from very tight to tight. And watch the word change as I hover over each of these. Here we are back to normal. Uh, character spacing, once again, is the amount of space between characters. Here's a loose character spacing, very loose. That's sometimes useful. And if you uh, need to increase it more than very loose, which is actually about six points more than normal, you can go to more spacing, which launches a dialog box which allows you to uh, define in points what you want your character spacing to be. Okay, so that's the topic of character spacing. Let's go back to our Kofi Annan slide here. Select it and then continue talking about the next control which will change the case. This can be really useful sometimes when you need to go to all uppercase, all lowercase, capitalize each word as in a title, toggle cases, and sometimes you'll paste in text from a website where it's typed in all caps and you need to toggle it to lowercase, okay, or sentence case where it capitalizes the first word of a sentence. So that's um, a useful control too that's available to you in the font group. And uh, finally, I'd like to talk about font color. Understanding color selection in PowerPoint is an important topic. When I click this drop down, I see 10 colors arrayed here. And I could change my font to any of these colors. And these 10 colors come from the design theme that I'm using. As a matter of fact, there are 12 colors associated with each design theme. And the tenor that, that are displayed here also have five variations underneath each of, each of them. So that's uh, 60 possible colors right here. And these are all part of my design theme. If I were to choose this green color in my font and then change design themes, let's go ahead and change to something else. Uh, you'll see it's no longer green. How it is now the color of the final design theme color here on my color picker. So that's why I would want to stick with my design theme colors. I'm going to undo what I just did and undo again to get back to white text. Uh, so that's that's what these colors up here mean. These are all part of the theme colors. Down below here are a different set of colors. These are just some standard colors available to you. If you choose to change your font to one of these colors and then pick a different design theme, the color will not change. These aren't associated with the design theme. The colors above are. I can also click more colors to get to a standard or custom color picker to define any of 16.7 million colors. Generally I like to stay away with that, away from that. It's best to stick with your um, design theme colors because they will change when you change design themes. And let me also show you the eyedropper tool which is new in PowerPoint 2013. Using this tool you can pick up any color that's on your slide and make it the font color. Okay, So sometimes when you're pasting a picture on you can change your font to be the same color as one of the objects in the picture uh, for a pleasing effect. So that's a quick intro and explanation of font colors. Yeah, I'm going to undo what I just did there too. And I have one final topic here and that is the dialog launcher. This little arrow in the lower right corner of the font group will launch the font dialog box. And this will let us apply yet again other uh, effects. Let me go ahead and cancel that, get down to our 
a new slide, select the text in the word education, and launch that dialog box again. And I can, if I choose, change the color from here of just what I've selected now. Or I can choose an underline style that is different from the standard single line. Let's uh, choose this dashed line. And in fact, let's make our underline orange. And then click OK. And there's an orange dashed underline. You see, I had to click the dialog launcher to get to the font dialog and define those things. Uh, I can also apply uh, subsuperscript, subscript, and this little offset box talks, uh, refers to the distance that the superscript or subscript are offset from the character. I can choose small caps, all caps, equalize character heights, and uh, do some other font related things here on this box and there's also a character spacing tab that lets me control uh, character spacing as I've already uh, talked about and also apply some kerning to uh, fonts that are have um, font sizes larger than 12 point. Kerning is the amount of space between letters when when the actual shape of the letter is considered. It's a little more advanced topic. So that is a real uh, quick summary of all of the various font tools that are available to you uh, on the font group on the home tab. Thanks for listening.